Welcome to Module 6 in CS288W Network Administration. This is going to cover Chapter 7, and it's going to be on configuring file services for Server 2008. Let's talk about the file services role. It was added through Server Manager roles. You can also add DFS role services along with it, and we'll talk about DFS. That'll be part of the lab that you do for this module. It allows a management tool to add file shares for client computers. You don't need the file services role to share files and folders, but it does make it a lot easier if you want to do many all at once. So there's two different types of access when someone wants to access the file shares either from the network or from locally on the computer. One of those types of access is, is the uh, share level access. And when you configure the share level access, you right click on a folder and go, go to uh, share. You can configure the permissions to be read only, read write, or full control. So there's not a lot of different types of access options there, but there's enough to make it work for you. The other type of permissions are the NTFS permissions. These are the permissions set in the security tab. So when you right click on a folder or a file, you go to properties, you'll see a security tab. You won't see the share tab on a file, but you will see the security tab on a file. On a folder, you'll see both. The NTFS permissions use inheritance. You can inherit the security permissions from the parent. You can push them out also to any subfolders. NTFS permissions also uses ACLS, which is access control lists. You uh, compare them to a security token and, and a security ID. So these access control lists will use these security IDs, which are tied back to usernames, to decide who gets access to what resource. And I'll show you an example of that coming up. The ways to share folders, you can right click on a folder and choose share. You can also use the shared folders console and you can use the share and storage management console. They all work slightly different, but they come up with the same result. And I'll give you an example of that shortly. Effective rights. When you access a shared folder from your computer to the server, what it does is it has this fancy formula that allows it to say what type of access you should and shouldn't have. It adds up all the rights in the share tab. It adds up all the rights in the secure tab, which we just talked about. And then between those two, it takes the most restrictive of the two tabs for the effective permissions. If you don't want to go through all that and you're not sure if you remember that formula, you can go to the effective permissions tab in the advanced section of every folder and you can test a user's access to see what kind of permissions that they have. And from there you can uh, change the security and share tabs until you get the result that you want. Distributed file system, DFS is used in multiple ways to help administrators manage and replicate multiple shared folders across a domain. You install it as a role service under the file services role, which I will show you how to do. It allows for the creation of a shared namespace, and it allows for replication to multiple servers. It can be used together or separately. So the way we use DFS in our business is if we have more than one location, uh, it doesn't have to be more than one location, it could be used in the same location, and we want to have redundancy between those locations, then we set up DFS to copy any files that we have in one server to the same folders in another server and you'll be doing that in your lab. And the reason you want them to replicate is because when someone is in one office and they open a file, they'll open the local server office instead of going all the way up to the remote office server to open that file. This makes access to the file much uh, quicker than if they uh, went across, say, a VPN tunnel or an MPLS type of uh, connection. Now there's two different pieces to the D DFS. There's the namespace piece and there's the replication piece. The namespace piece uh, allows you to have one name to connect to the same folder across multiple servers. So for instance, if you had server one in the Portland office and server two in say the LA office, 
uh, and they both had a shared folder named public. The, fo the files under the name public don't necessarily have to be the same if you don't use replication, but the name can be the same. So to access those two servers based on which office you're in, it would just choose backslash backslash and then the domain name will say test.local backslash public. So no matter which office you're in, a folder will open up on the local server. Now if you add rep replication to that, then the files in one office will be duplicated in the files to the other office. So for example, we've got domain.local backslash accounting. The accounting folder can be a shared folder on more than one server. It's got just got to be called accounting. It's got to be shared with the name accounting in this particular case. If you have multiple offices, it will pick the accounting folder share in the office closest to the user to speed up access. So that is a huge advantage. The user never knows what server it is physically on, so you can update it without notifying the user. So in the future, if you take down server one and put in server three, and you duplicate that accounting folder, the users won't even realize that it happens, which is great. You won't get any phone calls about that. DFS uses replication to allow you to replicate shared folders uh, among multiple servers. If one server goes down, the other server will serve the user without the user being aware of it due to the shared namespace mentioned earlier. So you're already using the same namespace no matter which server you connect to. So if server one goes down and server three comes up, then that's how the users won't even realize that it happens. Or if server one goes down, it will just automatically use server two, which has already been replicated. The data will be the same no matter which server the user accesses it. Again, only if you use replication. It can also be used without the namespace to replicate to hidden servers as a way to back them up. So we have some customers where we don't use the namespace piece. We only use the replication piece. So if they want to access server one, they do go to backslash backslash server one. And if they want to go to server two, they just use server two. So the namespaces are not replicated, but the data is. So what you can do is have everyone access server one and server two can be a hidden share where the data is replicated in case server one goes down. You don't have to restore from backup. You can just turn on DFS, uh, the DFS namespace on server two. You can also provide load balancing among multiple servers in the same office. So if you wanted to use DFS and you've got thousands of people, you can just load balance uh, the requests between the two. So it's great for large offices with many user requests to access the same data. If the same file is accessed at the same time, uh, time both more than one party. It, basically what this means is that if you have uh, the same file gets accessed at the same time and two different people are making changes to that same file at the same time one on one server, one on the other server. Then the server will decide which one uh, will actually be the replicated file and the other file will go into an error state which you will then be notified about and then you can uh, act on it accordingly. So in summary, we talked about the file and folder services role, shared and TFS permissions, ways to share folders, effective rights, DFS namespace. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like on your server. So we can start by going to roles and we can see that our file service role was already installed just by clicking on add roles and choosing the file service. But now we want to go ahead and add the DFS role on top of it. So if we right click on there, we add role services. And from here, it'll open up the file services role and it'll show us which ones we haven't checked under role services. So we're going to check both the DFS namespace and the DFS replication. Choose next. We're going to go ahead and choose the defaults here. It's a domain namespace. We're going to call it namespace one, although you can call it whatever you want. And then we'll choose next and choose the defaults and then continue. Now, while we're waiting, I'm going to show you how to create a shared folder. So let's go ahead and go to our C drive and we will create a shared folder and set up the permissions. So let's first create a folder called test. Now if we right click on test, you can go right to share with or you can go to properties and then you'll see a share tab shows up. Same thing. It's the exact same type of sharing. You've got a generic share here, which if you've got a lot of files in here, it takes a long time to set up. Or you can click the advanced sharing, which basically just does it in the background. I prefer to choose advanced sharing. So after you click on share, you'll click on permissions and you've got full control change, which is read write and you've got read. So I'm going to give everyone the full 
control. Click OK, click OK, click close. Now if I right click and go to security, you'll see that we've got these default permissions to get created because they were grabbed from the parent. So include inherited permissions is checked. So because of that, all these permissions came down with it. If I uncheck it, you'll see that everything gets removed. So in this case, we don't want to do that. So now, I, since I canceled it, we go back. And from here, we can also push out any changes we make to any subfolders, any child objects as well. Go ahead and apply. So uh, if we wanted to add someone or add everyone, we'll just click Add Everyone. And we'll click Check Name. And we'll click OK. And we'll go ahead and check Full Control. So there's lots of different options here for different types of permissions. And we'll click Apply. So if we want to see how that goes, then we can just browse to localhost, which is what every computer responds to. And we now see our test folder. And we can open up our folder if we want. And we can create a new file. So we'll create a new file, hit Enter. Now if we right click on that file, it should have inherited the permissions from the parents. So click on Security. Everyone has full permissions. There we go. So that worked exactly like it was supposed to work. Now if we want to, let's go ahead and finish up uh, DFS. It says it was successful. We can also do the same kind of thing through the share and storage management. So when we get the share and storage management, we can right click anywhere and we can choose you know, customization, help, refresh, that kind of stuff. On the left hand side, we can go ahead and we can connect to another computer, anything that we want that way. So we've got lots of different options here as well. So if we want, we can click on a share, like test we created earlier, and we can click on properties, and we can click on permissions, and we see the same share and NTFS permissions that we saw when we right clicked on the folder. From here, we can stop sharing if we want. We can make some other changes. We can go into advanced and we can set up some maximum users allowed, set up some caching as well. So all kinds of changes that we can do in the share and storage management uh, console that we could not do uh, from just right clicking on the folder. So that gives you an idea of the way to share a folder. So one thing we need to keep in mind is that when we add the, uh, when we want to figure out what permissions we have, we need to go to the effective permissions. So let's go back to our folder directly and go to properties. And remember when I said earlier, you've, you, what you do to get effective permissions is you add up all the share permissions and you add up all the security permissions and then whichever is the most restrictive, that is the permissions that you get. So if you click on advanced and click on effective permissions, we can actually test this theory out. So I'll go ahead and put in the administrator. Click check name. Click OK. And now it shows me I have full access to that folder. So if somebody can't get into a folder, you can do this test, go to the Effective Permissions tab, put in their name, and see which ones they don't have access to. And then you can go in and adjust either the security or the sharing tab in order to get that to work. So let's take a look now at DFS. We can now see a DFS uh, permissions in the, the Start menu that we didn't see before. Go to Start Administrative Tools, and now we see DFS Management. So in DFS, the two things we talked about earlier, you've got the namespace and you've got the replication. So easiest thing to do is to start with the namespace. Now we created a namespace during the installation called namespace1. So in order to get to this particular share, you're going to have to go to hosted.local backslash namespace and then the name of the folder. You can change this name or create a new namespace name to anything that you want to do. So from here, we can right click 
and we can choose new folder. Now, when we say new folder, it doesn't actually create a new folder. All it does is it creates a shared namespace folder for a folder that you've already shared. So we created a folder earlier called test. Now we're going to go ahead and find that folder called test, and there it is. Click OK. Now, if you have a second server with a shared folder named test, you would click add and you would click browse and you would change the name of the server up here to the other server name. You'll see the word test, you'll click OK, and then you'll see two servers in here. They will now be linked to the same namespace, which is what you want. Now, after that's done, you can go ahead and uh, choose to create replication. So you can say a new replication group, or you can just click on test, and then when you see these two uh, folders here, you can actually turn on replication right here. Now, since we only have the one folder, you don't see that option, but once you add the second folder, you can turn replication on right here. It's much easier, or you can go into replication and create a new group, and you can start replication that way. So rather than go through that entire process, you're going to be doing some of that in your labs, but this gives you a head start on how to do that. So let's take a look at our lab for this week. This is lab six, and you're going to be uh, uh, configuring some different uh, things, doing some captures, that kind of thing, going uh, into chapter seven. So there's not a lot to do in this one. This is not a long lab. It should be pretty easy to get through. Of course, you want to save it in the uh, formats that are desired. And that is it for module six, uh, configuring file service services in Windows Server 2008.